In nature, nothing is wasted. Life simply transforms. But in Tanzania, tons of food used to go to waste while farmers barely made profits. That's when one woman decided to step in with science. As a child, Diana saw her uncle struggle to access better quality and affordable fish food. Growing up, she realized that nothing had changed. So I decided to apply the science as a tool to come up with an innovative way of producing fish food. As a microbiologist and entrepreneur, Diana solved this problem by using microbes to turn food waste into fish feed and biofertilizers. By repurposing the waste from fish feed to make biofertilizers for plants, no feed ensures that nothing goes to waste. Today, they have upcycled more than 500 tons of food waste and empowered more than 2,000 farmers with affordable fish feed and fertilizers. From waste to nourishment and problem to possibility, no feed feeds the fish, fish feed the world, and science makes it possible. Hello everyone. This is a picture of me and my uncle Musa. He was a fish farmer and the man who raised me. He farmed for decades and struggled to access a better quality feed for his fish. The fish feed was very expensive imported and reliant on fish meal. During the university, I realized over 76% of smallholders fish farmers in Tanzania face the same reality. I found no feed to turn abundant food waste into single cell protein rich fish feed and organic biofertilizer. Why? so that no farmers struggle like my uncle. But how do we do this? I know all of you have heard about biotechnology before for, for production of beer or medicine, but this time, African time, it's biotechnology for production of sustainable fish food. We use fermentation technology and bacteria as a cell factory. We extract nutrients from the food waste and use it to cultivate the bacteria cells which we then have harvested and mixed with other ingredients to make a complete feed for the farmed fish. And the byproduct from our fermentation process is repurposed into microbial-rich biofertilizer that nourish our soil today and improve the farmer's yield. We sell our product through network of distributors. Our feed sells for 1.3 US dollars per kilogram with a 30% of a profit margin. Our fertilizer sells for 3 US dollars per liter with a 35% of a profit margin. So far, due, due to this technology, farmers are now seeing 30% increase of their profit. And on top of that, more than 500 tons of waste have been upcycled up and diverted from the landfills. And 22 youths are now employed at no feed. Last year, we closed with a revenue of 420,000 US dollars. And we expect this number to increase in the coming year. But I remind you, we started from a very humble beginning in 2020 to a pilot scale in 2023. And to scale our impact, we have completed a fully built factory capable of producing more than 6,000 metric tons of sustainable feed per annum, ready to meet the rising market demand. And with the advanced machinery already in place, we are set for strong and sustainable income. This is a lab. Once active, it will accelerate our work and create more opportunities for scientists like me. And winning the prize today will be very transformational to our business. It will enable us to create 20 additional jobs, fully launch this full production facility, and positioning us to sell more than 4,000 tons of feed by 2027 and generate a revenue of 5 million US dollars. The market is very huge. We intend to capture 10% of our beachhead market in the next five years. And uh, we have the right team with the right skills, passion, and talent to take this business across the globe. Thank you. Judges, over to you. Hello, Diane. Um, what a cool story. And uh, I'm, really, I'm really excited by the, uh, the, the reuse of uh, food waste and turning it into fertilizer and, and uh, fish food. I um, wanted to ask uh, a couple of questions. Um, the first one is um, uh, on the front end of your business, which is the intellectual property. Um, 
is it uh, protected and what prevents um, some big guy coming in and say, wow, that's a very cool thing, I'm just gonna copy her? Our technology is patentable, it's currently patent pending, and we're patenting different areas of our business, including the consortium of bacteria that we are using that can utilize the source of waste as a carbon and energy as they grow into a bigger volume of biomass, but also the technology to keep this alive uh, outside the waste, their cells alive outside the waste, and active ones applied on the organic waste so that uh, we can be able to scale this across Africa. We have seen how this have done, have been done with lactobacillus that is used to ferment milk to make a uh, fermented milk, but we have also seen the use of yeast for making dough. All these are microbes that have been protected to stay uh, inactive before being applied in a product and they become active once applied on a product. We are kind of taking a similar approach to make sure that uh, we will be able to protect our innovation, but also beyond that, to be able to scale it in another country where just like where we, you can buy lactobacillus in Tanzania now, although it's produced in China, in Vietnamese, in Western, we want also to be able to sell these microbes that we have already worked on and proved that they can do this amazing work of fermenting this waste in another country, maybe Rwanda, maybe Nigeria, maybe Cameroon, so that, and maybe Western countries, but also license this technology to any company that wants to do this. But beyond that, let me remind you this. The fish feed company is very big for one company to take over this. For example, Tanzania right now, the feed alone market is worth more than 52 million US dollars. And for the global markets, more than billions of money. So we need more people to, be, to tap into this because at the end of the day, our, our goal is to help the farmers produce af sustainably, affordably, and yeah. Congratulations on you. the work you've done so far. Thank you. You're so you. young, but you've done a lot of work. So very well done. Thank you. Now, um, I'm looking at your numbers. Yeah. And in uh, between 2024 and 2025, yeah. which is this year end, yeah. um, you're growing by 65%. Yeah. But between 2025 and 2026, yeah. your projected growth is about 158.3%. Yeah what will be the game changer? I'm assuming <laughs> ABH is supposed to be in the mix of that somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'd like so. <laughs> you to tell me how you envision that. Yeah, sure. So you know what? There is, we have a very high demand for our product. That's why we decided to scale our production facility to be able to produce in massive demand to meet this unmet demand. That's why you see right now our focus is to be able to fully launch and operationalize this new facility so that we can eat that growth of more than 100% from the 2025. Our production capacity right now is less than uh, 30 tons a month, but you can see from this production facility, once opened, once starting to operate, we can produce more than 60,000 metric tons of feed per annum that's, uh, that's a lot. That means we, our machinery has a, has a capacity of more than 20 tons of feed per day. So meaning, once we will be able to push this in the market, we will be able to generate a lot of revenue and grow that massive to more than 100% compared to our growth this year and the last year. When, when do you expect the new uh, facility to become operationalized? Yeah. And if you were to win today, yes. what will you do with the $300,000 in the mix of this? Sure, thank you so much for your nice question. So we are expecting to finish the installation of these machineries by January, 2025, by January 2026. Winning today will be incredible and transformational to our business, as I mentioned, because it will enable us to have a working capital to support us to start this new factory. What is limiting us right now is enough cash to be able to launch this new factory. So if we win today, we'll direct this money into working, part, working capital, ensuring that we have enough raw material for production of this big, huge amount of feed. We'll invest, we will fuel our capex, including the logistic investment, because uh, we are targeting mostly last mile farmers. Right now, we only have these two trucks that's helping us distributing our product. So we're going to invest into leasing more trucks and buying additional ones so that we can be able to reach more farmers uh, at the right time and sell more product. Okay, let's 
play another scenario. Yes. What, I mean, everybody that gets to the top 10 is a winner one way or the other. Yeah, sure. Because you would walk away with at least $100,000. True. Sure. So assuming you're not the top winner today, yeah. you still get $100,000 because you're in the, in the last 10. Yeah. How will you still move your factory forward? Okay, so wh wh what we are doing right now, we, are already, we have already approached the Tanzania Agriculture Development Bank. We were looking for ways for us to get asset financing in terms of logistics, but we are also looking for ways to get a working capital. The discussion is still ongoing, and we hope once we're able to close, it, to close this, we will be able to finance our start. But also we have a revenue coming from selling our product that will also back us going forward. Yeah. And I forgot to mention, I have 100,000K. I have 100,000K from ABH already. <laughs> that one, I'm also going to direct it to helping me to scale this. I have 100,000 secured. Yes. You remember that one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I said so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great, great. Congratulations, Diana. Thank uh, you so much. For making it to the top 10. Um, great business. I like the science-based products, uh, your bio fertilizer, your, your fish feed science-based. I think that that's great, that's powerful. Um, my, my question to you, can you tell us about your main competitors and what your competitive advantage is? Mm -hmm. And because it's a science-based product, how much um, are you investing in your R&D to make sure you continue being competitive? Yeah, sure. Thanks so much, Diana, for your a very nice question. Our main competitors right now, over 90% of feed in Tanzania is imported. We have a demand annually of more than 36 metric tons of feed to be imported into our country. And we have a, a, I mean, a deficit of more than 450,000 metric tons of fish in the country that make it a very huge opportunity for us to introduce our feed. But comparing us to our competitors who are selling conventional feed, our technology, first of all, is a closed-loop biotechnology platform, enabling us to produce a protein at a very lower cost. Because, you know, with the conventional feed, why the price is high, Protein alone, which comes from the fish meal, account for over 70% of the feed total production cost. And all this is directed to the final consumer. These are smallholders farmers. That's why they're investing a lot and they can't see a return on their investment. That's our products sell for 1.3 US dollars per kilogram. And the competitors' feed sell for two US dollars, a range of two US dollars to three US dollars per kilogram, making ours affordable and much cheaper for the farmers. Coming to the yield, our farmers, farmers using our product are able to increase their yield by 30, five, by 30 to 45 percent, depending on their location, depending on their soil. 30 percent is for the fish farmers, 45 percent is for the, for the crop farmers. And coming back to the economic benefit to the farmers, we took this based on the feedback from the farmers, this data based on the feedback from the the farmers and based you on our research, uh, farmers using no feed product are able to gain extra 200 US dollars to 450 US dollars per, per cycle of a production. How did this get calculated? It's based on a farmer who is owning 200 square meter of a fish pond. This farmer intensively, he can, he can put more than 1,000 fish on his, on his farm. And if he does this unintensively, he can go up to 600 uh, fish per cycle. And our feed conversion ratio is one ratio two, meaning to produce one kilogram of a fish, you only need two kilogram of, uh, of no feed fish feed. One kilogram of a fish right now sells for roughly five US dollars, and two kilogram of no feed, you'll get it for 2.60 US dollars, meaning a farmer can be able to get extra profit. That's another third point. But also the last point, we are, competitive based on the way we are distributing our product. We are using a network of distributors, like uh, these distributors already have their customers. We don't have to spend a lot on acquiring new customers. We are selling to them and they convince the farmers, like there is this new product. And beyond that, we are partnering with different organizations. For example, just like here, last year, we partnered with Mennonite for Economic Development Association that's headquartered in Canada. We set different demonstration plots. This was meant to, to ensure, to train the farmers based on our product and tell the, and like facilitate the farmers' adoption of this bio-based product and tell them how they're performing and they can see it uh, firsthand how they works. Talk to us about this. Yeah.
So I, I asked about your R&D budget. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It's, it's, it has to be a competitive advantage. Uh, uh, anyone can yeah. copy uh, the technology. So how, how are you investing in technology and knowledge? I was forgetting that important point. We have a research laboratory in place that is currently working. That is to improve the biometrics of our product and analysis of our product and it's serving as a center for us to continue innovating around this new biobest product. But beyond that, you see the construction of this new lab facility. This is meant to expand the microbiology lab. I'm a microbiologist by profession. I want to have a microbiology lab and create another opportunity for beyond science that we are working with now to make sure that we are, uh, we are having a place where we can innovate more and we can improve the, improve the biometrics of our product. So we already have a research laboratory. Amazing. You, you make me want to, to become a fish farmer because the economics looks... You should. You should. Nigeria is the second leading fish farming in Africa. So Rwanda, we invite you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> the Thank feed you now is here. Yeah. Not a lot of people to feed. So that's why. Yeah. But one last question. Yeah. Tell me how you want to move this business out of Tanzania. What is your pan-African strategy? My pan-African strategy is this one. Smallholders fish farmers struggle all around the Africa. And these are the people who are the backbone of the food security. If we can't back these people, at the end of the day, in the next coming decades, we won't be able to feed this growing population of Africa. When we were designing our technology, we were designing with, with our African smallholders fish farmer in mind, located anywhere in Africa. Our technology, if you see it, we are using food waste. Food waste is a burden for most countries in Africa if not all of them. All these mega cities are producing a lot of waste. Tanzania, for example, more than 700,000 tons of waste go to dump site every day. Over 70% of that is a organic waste that can be diverted and reintroduced into the food system. So this technology can be scaled in any country in Africa because it doesn't depend on our weather. It doesn't depend on our climate. It doesn't depend on our, it's zero seasonality. And you can produce this throughout the year. And you wait, 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 wait. And the, the microbes that we are using, as you say, as you, you heard me saying, like, uh, we, we, are, we are taking the approach of lactobacillus or of yeast, which we have seen imported from Western countries and being used in another country. We want to take that approach so that we can be able to take these microbial cells, take it to Nigeria, take it to Cameroon, take it to Rwanda, and then the fermentation, beer is produced all over the countries. It's the same technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, Diana. So I was saying it's the same technology of production. You know what, I love, I love how you go, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> your time is up, my dear. Well done, well done, well done. <laughs> Please take your place backstage. <laughs>